with uh, this extremely concerning news about Botox treatment. An undercover reporter for the Sunday Mirror, Tyrinia Tarras, had something of an old-fashioned scoop this week when she posed as a doctor. She hasn't had one minute's medical training in her life, by the way. And after paying 300 quid for a one-day course, she was given a certificate allowing her to inject unwitting patients with toxic Botox. Now, this is serious stuff, because Botox is poison, obviously. It's used to paralyse away facial wrinkles. And in the wrong hands, it can paralyse the entire face. Well, Terenia is here now, along with cosmetic surgeon Dr Alex Caridis. And thank you both for coming. Well, well done on getting a good scoop. Thank you. Um, how hard was it, though? I mean, you, just, you went in to see a, a well-known and respected Botox practitioner, and you said you were a doctor, and he didn't ask to see any uh, evidence at all of that. Not at all, no. Just took your word for it? Yeah, I just I, I booked the course over the phone and paid for it after going onto the internet and finding various courses. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was hundreds of courses to pick. So you pick this one at random? Yeah, just Hundreds a of them? Yeah, on the all, and all offering, what, a one-day course? Most or? of the time, yeah. Just Most one day? Yeah. Okay, so you went along and um, didn't have to sort of verify anything about you being a doctor. No documents need to be produced. What did you learn in that day? Um, basically, I sat with one surgeon. Um, it was just myself on the course. Mm -hmm. So I spent all day in his surgery and he discussed the anatomy of the face and then he had about 30 patients coming in and I just watched him. You watched him oh, doing this, was, kind of, this kind of procedure? This, this kind of procedure of uh, a Botox injection? Yeah. 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 And that's... And, and did you actually get to um, administer any of it yourself? No, I was asked on one of the courses. Um, the delegates on the courses were asked to inject each other, but obviously I... You, know, you didn't do it. You yeah. made your excuses, as it were. Yeah. Um, <laughs> OK, so had, have you ever injected anyone in your life before? No. OK, and if you weren't a scrupulous a Fleet Street reporter, as opposed to an unscrupulous person who wanted to make a fast buck mm. working in the Botox industry, because the guy said when you finished the day, he said, OK, that's it, you're certified, we've got the certificate here. There it's it is. Certificate. You can now run your own practice administering Botox injections. That allows you to do that. And yeah. the, the thing about it is, Karenia, and, and, and you would know too, Alex, is that it is... Um, um, it's very lucrative to set up in business doing that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And you actually met, didn't you? You actually met nurses, who, uh, not doctors obviously, but you met nurses who were being badly paid, mm. who said they couldn't wait to actually set up their own clinics administering Botox and earn more money. Yeah, I mean, it costs about £350 per treatment. It takes about five minutes. Yeah. Um, and one surgeon did 30 patients in a day. Jeez. Well, I have to say, oh. the guy that, that you went to, um, we spoke to him, and he said to us that it's common in the industry, generally, uh, to take people at their word. They're not used to people impersonating doctors. We've got a short statement here. He says he'd never knowingly train anyone but doctors in how to administer Botox. He says, and as I don't advertise my courses to the public, they're only known about within the medical community. It's routine practice to work on trust in the doctor's world, and if this person wasn't a reporter, she'd have been arrested for impersonating a doctor. However, I do now ask for full documentation before I do any training. So you've Can made I a just difference. ask one thing? He, he says that it, it, he only um, mentioned he's they're only known about within the medical community. You say these courses are actually on the it internet. It was on the internet. Yeah, they're on the aye internet. Aye. Okay. okay, fair enough. Alex Caridis, can we can we just <coughs> come to you? How dangerous um, is 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 this practice? What what Terenia was learning to do? How dangerous um, is it? Irresponsible to give these one day courses. Well, yeah, I think just because you, you go on a course, one-day course, and get a stiff, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're capable of actually injecting uh, people. Yes, technically, you have a piece of paper that says you've been on a course and you've learned some anatomy and you've been shown how to do it, but uh, you know, that, that in itself does, doesn't really mean anything. Mm. Um, all, all this does is it basically um, goes according to the guidelines that the Health Care Commission has said that you know, people who are supposed to inject Botox should undertake uh, some sort of uh, training yeah. uh, course mm. for this. Um, but unfortunately, as, you, as you've heard, it, it's, it's totally unregulated and well, you know, what, anybody can just come in. Anybody, just, I could uh, do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but what, I mean, okay, can, what can go wrong? Because we, we know Botox is a poison. It is, um, yeah, it's a toxin, effectively. Right, and so, what it, it does know, is it, it paralyzes the muscles to... Yeah, basically, it's a muscle relaxant, which yeah. could weaken the muscle or even paralyze the muscle. Now, if you inject it in the wrong place, into the wrong muscle, you could have an adverse effect. You could get weakening of that muscle. If, for example, if you inject it accidentally into the upper eyelid, you could get a drop of the eyelid, which would mean that you'd be walking around for about three months with your eyelid half shut. So, so it's not permanent, then, if it goes wrong? No, it's not permanent, but I don't think that's any consolation. Somebody no, of course walking not, around no. with, with their face half drooping. Yeah. Right. So, it, so it, what it, would it, you like? I mean, because, in, in effect, I mean, how, how would, if I wanted to have Botox, how would I make sure that the person that, who was administering, mm. administering it was a fully qualified and experienced practitioner? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, at the moment, a lot of people actually administer Botox, some nurses, some doctors, um, and nurses are supposed to uh, administer Botox in a proper uh, supervised medical setting, okay, ah, which right. should mean in the clinic. They should not be 
uh, in a spa. It should not be in a beauty salon. Or in your own front room. Or in your own front room or in the backyard no. or whatever. So go to a reputable clinic. Yes, absolutely. Where the environment is secure. Absolutely, okay. where they have a medical supervision available okay. or at hand. Okay. Um, that sort of, you know, gives you some confidence. Just one more point about you. You actually managed to get, get your hands on some real Botox. Yeah. You? That's so yeah. legal. How did, how did you get it? Um, I just rang up the... They'd sent me some account forms, set up account with the company, and um, I rang them up. I said I'd sent the forms back in. This is the company that supplies it? That's right, that yeah. manufactures it. Yeah. And um, so they apologised that the account hadn't been set up, and I said, look, you know, yeah. can you send me some? So they agreed, and I had it in the post. I had it delivered to my home address, the, you know, the next day. Which company was that? Allegan. We've got a statement from them, too. <laughs> Have you got it there, too? Yeah, they, they just say that they, this is, they, they've taken this very, very seriously indeed, and they say that what an employee broke their control progress, which is normally very rigorous, and that employee is no longer with the company. They uh, also said there's an internal investigation, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they're working on an investigation, so they, they, they acknowledge that that should not have happened. Well, you rattled some bars there. on the case, didn't you? <laughs> but you reckon you could do it again, I, I guess, at the moment, if you tried again? To get on another course? Yeah. Um, I think so. Having said that, in all fairness, I think the Health Care Commission is buckling down now, and uh, I think before the end of the year they're going to have uh, rules and regulations in place which should hopefully stop this. Down well, Thank you Absolutely. very much. Thank you.